Hey guys, today we're taking a look at the new McFarlane DC Multiverse Robin Tim Drake. Apparently from DC Rebirth, but it looks like more of his modern design that you'd see nowadays. But let's get a better look at that packaging, shall we? Here we are up close and personal with the packaging here. We of course have the contents up there. We of course have the 12 plus warning up there with the white trim. We have the DC Multiverse logo with the old DC logo as of the recording of this video. We have the Robin Tim Drake nameplate down there. On the side, we again have Robin Tim Drake on the nameplate right there. The DC Multiverse logo up on the side. On the bottom, you have a QR code to scan a comic on the DC Universe Infinite app, which is kind of cool. On the back, you have this, I want to say, and I'm going to put out my guess here, I could be wrong, but this looks like a Dan Mora, um, this looks like Dan Mora art. So I'm going to go with that. This is a Dan Mora uh, draw, uh, art right here with, of course, Robin Tim Drake from DC Rebirth. But this looks more along the lines because in um, in Rebirth, he was still going by the name of Red Robin. Now he's back to Robin in the current uh, Chip Zdarsky Batman run. And this is what it looks like uh, this version of the character is from. And I'll get to it into it more with the figure, but at least from what I see right here, it looks like it's his more modern design and not his actual Rebirth design right there. And on the bottom, you of course have the McFarlane Toys social medias. Of course, follow them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Valuable resources if you're looking to get ahead on like pre-orders and stuff like that. Valuable resources there. More QR code, DC Universe Infinite stuff on the bottom. On the side, you of course have a big Robin Tim Drake uh, nameplate right there from DC Rebirth, which pretty sure that's inaccurate. Um, you have the DC Multiverse logo up at the top. You have the McFarlane Toys logo at the bottom. Up at the very, very top, you have the 22 moving parts thing up there. You have another McFarlane Toys logo up at the very top. Nothing at the tippy tippy top, just the window. On the bottom, you of course have the Batman legalese and a barcode for all you barcode hunters out there. But all right, guys, let's get this dude out of the packaging. And here we are with Tim Drake out of the packaging here. And of course, before we take a look at the figure himself, we're of course going to take a look at the other contents, which comes to my first thing, which of course is the hockey puck, which has the standard DC logo right there and the one peg right there. And then up next, we of course have the card, which has that beautiful Dan Mora illustration right there with the Tim Drake label down there. Apparently from DC Rebirth, but that does not look right. And that's a solid bio if you want to read that. And basically gives a sum up of Tim's uh, identity as a character. He He's, in my opinion, the best partner for Batman. Like, he is a detective. He He's the best Robin, even though I still think Dick Grayson is the greatest Robin. Because, you know, he's better as Nightwing. But, uh, really solid card there. And, um, we of course, he of course comes with multiple hands. Which I will give a sum up of what he all comes with right now. Which comes to these two, which are gripping hands, which he could... Used potentially for a staff, but they didn't even include a staff for some reason, even though that's Tim Drake's signature weapon. Very odd, very odd, but, um, solid gripping hands. I will try to see if I can get the staff of the first Tim Drake in these hands, but they look a bit small, so who knows. And then up next we have... These kind of more relaxed hands, I suppose, like he's reaching for something. And uh, it comes with uh, both, for both arms. So there's those hands. Then he comes with um, more reaching, more um, gripping hands, I suppose, for both sides. So, and all of them have solid uh, green paint apps overall. 
I didn't see any point paint blemishes or anything on them. And then we have some oddballs, like we have a thumbs up hand for the right hand, we have a pointer finger for the left hand. So all, all around solid uh, collection of hands right there. But he comes with nothing else, so they're all kind of pointless. And then you, of course, have um, the fists that come with the figure himself. But uh, let's get into the figure, shall we? And one thing I will have to say is that this is not based off of the Rebirth design entirely. This is this looks more based on um, the Chip Zdarsky Jorge Jimenez run on Batman, which is actually at the recording of this video, the current run. So, because just look at that face. If you've read any Jorge Jimenez illustrated uh, Tim Drake, you know that's Jorge Jimenez. T Jorge Jimenez's uh, Tim Drake, as well as just the costume entirely. Because in Rebirth, he was still going by Red Robin at the time. And so he had two R's right there instead of one. So that alone makes it obviously the um, Jorge Jimenez illustrated version of the character. And like I said before, the head is straight up out of a Jorge Jimenez uh, illustration, which is pretty cool. And probably, honestly, the most uh, comic-accurate head sculpt we've probably ever gotten. Because it's straight up uh, the comic outside of... Well, um, Kingdom Come is pretty good, too. Kingdom Come Batman. Uh, but that's the only one I can really draw up where it's like... He looked like he walked straight out of the book with that one. But um, as you can obviously tell, he has wired cape. Wired capes are cool. I love wired capes. You can do all sorts of fun stuff with them. Even though I'm not a huge fan of uh, the under... Whatever they did with, with uh, the underbelly. Because it looks like he just has a lot of holes there. So you will see that. And of course, it doesn't look... And the black makes it more easy to blend in than the yellow. So that kind of sucks. But outside of that, it's not really an issue. On, um, and then he's relatively a very basic figure, to be honest, in terms of look. He's got the red kind of Robin tunic armor kind of look right there with the three little things right there. Not that well applied because you have some, um, some yellow where it's supposed to not be there. So that kind of sucks. But it's not that big of a deal. If you look too hard, you won't, you'll barely notice it. And also the Robin insignia is just painted on. It's not sculpted. Probably because they want to get more mileage out of this uh, armor right there. Because I don't, I, I don't think this is the same sculpt as the, um, the standard uh, John Kent Superboy buck. Not Superboy. John Kent uh, Superman buck. And then we, of course, have the uh, green armor, which... Looks pretty good besides that. That's pretty ugly. And then on the other side, which looks not bad. Then he has obviously painted uh, skin tone on the arms there. He has green uh, shoulders, shoulder armor, which that looks painted on. So there is that. And then he has green gauntlets, which look inspired by Damien. At least that's what I'm getting from it. It really screams uh, the Damien era. Especially, I think, in his more modern costume. He has stuff like this going. And then we come down to the belt here, which um, when I got him out of the packaging, the belt was up here floating. So I'm not sure it's just failure to glue it down. It looks like it because I think there's some glue right there. But just be aware of that, that your belt might, that your belt for Robin might be floating. And I also love the fact that the belt actually looks like an actual vigilante belt, where he's got all these different, like, ca he's got capsules right here, he's got pouches, he's even got, like, a rope right there, which is pretty cool. You have more pouches, and you even have the clasp on the back. 
which looks pretty tight. And then it looks like he might have a kill switch in the center, like the Batman Beyond suit. So that stuff's all pretty cool. And then you, of course, have the green down there, which, like I said, I think everything above the waist is new. Everything below the waist is reused from the John Kent uh, body book. So, and how I, how I can tell that is obviously uh, these little things right there. But um, besides the green up at the top and the green encircling the soles, which is pretty nice, I'm not gonna lie, and uh, very, very nicely applied too, which it, that would be very hard to keep that uh, consistent. But um, besides that, not a lot. It looks pretty good. But uh, we're gonna get into articulation now. So um, up at the head, he has a double classic double ball peg where he can move up about that far. He can move down about that far. He can rotate full 360 and of course have head pivot like so. Standard double ball peg stuff. For the arms, he has nice butterfly joints right there. Very nice, very nice. He can move his shoulders out that far. He can rotate them a full 360, giving you get the cape out of the way. He has a bicep swivel up top. He has a solid um, elbow joint right there because the green kind of separates the black. And then he ha and then he has um you might think it's restricted, but it's not, which is cool. So the wrists are completely intact. You can do the classic wrist thing with the McFarlane wrists. And I love these wrists where you can rotate the arm and they can do either or. I love that. My favorite parts of any McFarlane figure. And then for the abs, he can of course crunch that far forward move that far back and at the bottom as well. So nice solid range in it, but wh why can all of his figures limbo, but he they can't crunch besides Sportsmaster? I don't understand that. And then he, at the legs, he has standard McFarlane legs where they can move that far forward, that far back, and of course, and Beautiful thigh pivot, very good thigh pivot. He has double jointed knees, which don't look that bad. At the bottom, you can of course rotate up at the top, ankle pivot at the bottom, hinge up and down like so, and of course, toe articulation and uh, peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And here's our new Tim Drake with the primary members of the Bat family anyway. From left to right, we of course have Hush Batman with that amazing Jim Lee head sculpt. We have Rebirth, uh, Damian Wayne, probably my favorite look for the character right there. Our new Jorge Jimenez, Tim Drake right there. And I, I want to say because of the head sculpt, the, the head sculpt looks very much like the Bruno Redondo, Tom Taylor Nightwing run, which is still going on, by the way, as of the recording of this video, so... Very cool there. And we of course have Jason Todd, Red Hood right there. And I think they'd, they all pretty much go into each other. Batman a bit, Batman and Red Hood a bit less so because they they have a more um, house style than these three in here, which have a more artistic license. But besides that, I think they do have a really good um, synergy within them. And you could totally uh, have a great Bat family shelf with all of these characters in here there. we are with the original tim drake here from the 90s with our new jorge jimenez tim drake here and let me just see if this actually works let's see if i can get it out of his hand without falling yeah so you can get it into his hand but I don't know how long that's gonna stay. And it's a beefy stick. So be on the lookout for that. Actually, it looks pretty pretty in there. So yeah, if you have the original figure, 
you could give this guy your uh, staff if the you want him to be your main one instead of uh, that guy right there. So, cool beans. Uh, but overall, uh, this guy obviously is trying to be more realistic, more of a house uh, McFarlane-esque style, where this is obviously just the art straight from the comic. So, they don't really fit well together, I'd say, but still... Two solid Tim Drake figures, nonetheless. And here we are kind of winding down on our look at Tim Drake here. And overall, I think he's a really solid figure. Really solid use of a reuse, even though those little things at the bottom should totally not be there. They're just in black. Get rid of them. Just, if you want to reuse them, just shave off those aspects and you'll be fine. I don't get why they have to keep using those legs without any alterations. It just doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But besides that, he obviously looks like he appeared straight off the page. That head sculpt is absolutely immaculate. Like Jorge Jimenez's art has never been fully represented like it is here. Even in the Batman statue, I think this is probably the best Jorge Jimenez base figure I have ever seen personally and then when you put a staff in his hand it really comes together but the fact they didn't give him a staff honestly lowers it a mile for me because I have because I um I don't know which one because I'm I'm probably gonna end up uh either parting ways with one of my Tim Drake figures because I'm only gonna have one I'm not gonna have two Robin Tim Drake figures for my uh collection but uh, the thing is, is that I, if this one had the staff, this one would be my new favorite. But again, it comes down to the reuse and the real lack of color, which doesn't really have to do much with the figure itself, but it's the design itself. So I'm going to have to give this one, um, I'd say... An 8.5, 8.5 to a 9 around there. He's really strong. I mean, look, shoot, he's got all these freaking hands. Like, he's a really solid figure. And again, the wired cape does so much, but he doesn't come with the staff. And I think that really holds the figure back. But um, outside of that, really solid sculpt here. A lot of great details. And uh, yeah, yeah. I really enjoy him. Um, if you're wanting to get a uh, good Tim Drake figure, this is a good one to get for. And if you don't mind it being looking a little different than what you remember from things like the animated series and stuff like that, this is a solid uh, figure for you. But if you're obviously a huge fan of the 90s and you don't like a lot of modern stuff, you're obviously not going to like this guy because it's a modern uh, revitalization of that classic uh, Tim Drake look. But um, besides that, yeah, that's really it on this figure here. He's really he's a really solid figure, and he's so close to greatness. But he hasn't quite gotten there yet. But um, as always, guys, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Tell me what you think about Tim Drake and more down in the comments down below. I love reading your guys' comments. It really makes the editing process a lot easier. And uh, more more doable than a lot of times, as I do have a full-time job outside of this as well. And um, yeah, guys, as always, keep collecting and um, be kind and courteous out there. And I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.